welcome back to Walk, Run, Soar. Uh, today's Wednesday. You can see it's still really windy. Um, we're kind of hoping the wind will die down so we can go out on the boat that we rented um, without fearing for our life. But um, it's Wednesday. Uh, we're doing, it's day 31 of, the, of our 40 days. Um, this is number 40 in the book. Running toward the rock. Um, and I like this one because she talks about the ocean. And that's where I am right now. Our verse is Psalm 62, verse 6 through 7. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. So like I said, she's talking about um, the ocean a little bit in this one, which is fun because you know, we're in the keys. Uh, but she says the ocean's always been her happy place um, and she always found refuge near the water's edge. The crash of the waves, the salty air tickling her tongue, and the breathtaking sunsets calm her soul and inspire her all at once. So yes, very much relate on that. I, lo I, love, I love the beach and the ocean. Um, so she talks about a race that she ran. Uh, let's see. She didn't say when she did it, but... It's rocking around the pier half marathon from Moro Rock to a pier that I can't pronounce in California. It's an out and back trail run, and and uh, a lot of it is on hard packed sand along the Pacific Ocean. Um, and I can feel very different if you've never ran on uh, ran on a beach before. But and she says that this run was to honor the runner and teacher Brian Waterbury, who died of melanoma cancer in 2003. A cancer with which her family was all too familiar. So I'm wondering if maybe that's the cancer her first husband died of, maybe. Um, but anyway, so they uh, she went with her running club, and uh, she says that she she usually would run with uh, you know her carefully made playlist for that particular race. But she didn't run with any music this time um, because she was enjoying the sound of the waves, the wind, and the birds, and the crunching under her feet of. Uh, kelp and sand dollars um, and she was trying to avoid crabs and things like that so okay so it's a half marathon so she ran more than 10 miles and then her feet hit some soft sand um, which can be it, if you've been to the beach you know how you know even walking in that soft sand it gets you in your calves that's for sure um, and she was starting to kind of get a little discouraged um, and she says she felt like Moses and the Israelites standing in the darkness before the Red Sea the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind and turned it to dry land. The waters were divided. God was working through my darkness to hold back the sea of grief. If he could harness the wind in these ocean ways, he could surely help me navigate any rough waters. <clears throat> so she uh, is going along and she eventually sees Sean, her husband. Um, he had finished the race and had come back uh, to, you know, catch, you know, find her and help her to the finish. Um, and she, it was uh, foggy. She couldn't see the, um, the finish line, but Sean kept telling her, you know, you're, you're very close. You're almost there. Even though you can't see it, just keep moving forward. You're almost there. Um, and she eventually couldn't see the, the actual finish, but she saw the great rock, Moro rock, rising glorious and majestic before her. Um, so she just kept her eyes on that and ran towards it. Um, and she, that's what made her think of the verse uh, that I read at the beginning about um, God being our rock and salvation. So she, uh, she says, do you feel like you're drowning in waves of grief or struggle or pain? Are you squinting through the mist of, for that elusive finish line? Are your feet slipping as you run through the soft sand? I encourage you to run towards the rock. The waves of grief will come and go, ebb and flow, but the rock will provide a steady refuge. So the face step is, have you ever experienced grief or loss in your life? Briefly describe a few of those losses that have made the biggest impact on you. I've been... Um, I don't know what the what the word is. So I haven't experienced a whole lot of loss uh, in my in my immediate family at this point in my life. I'm getting ready to turn 35 now. Um, you know, like I've shared recently, we just um, uh, my husband's mother, my mother-in-law, uh, just recently passed away, um, and it, it was it, it really the sad part is just the the family that's left behind. Uh, you know my father-in-law and like for her specifically it was we were relieved because you know she was dealing with cancer and it was a, it was a relief to know that now she's in the presence of God pain-free in a perfectly new and beautiful uh, heavenly body you know um, but it is sad the uh, 
the the loss that's felt by the people that are still here. That's that was the really sad part of that. Um, and we, you know, I've had several friends pass away recently too. It's, it, March was a rough month. Um, uh, and uh, her next question is, how has God been a rock for you in those difficult times? While you run, meditate on these words from 60, Psalm 62, my rock and salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. I think, um, I, I really don't know what it would be like to lose someone and not know you know, the, the, the weird way of saying it is there's the state of their salvation, I guess. Um, because everyone that I've lost, that, that, in, that I've known that has passed away recently, we knew that they were very strong in their faith. So we know we're gonna see them again. But, so I don't know what it's like to lose someone and really, I guess, and I guess that's the, the point, um, you know, that God wants you to, you know, really share your faith. Um, and really try to get them to understand how much God loves them. You know, anyone in our life, not just people that are, you know, dying. Or I guess we're all dying, but you know, you know what I mean. It was really hot this morning when I ran, so my mind is a little fuzzy. Um, our inspirational quote um, is from Jeffrey, his last name starts with an M, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, 2011 Boston Marathon and New York Marathon champion. All right, so his quote is, when I am running, I run with no fear. I try to perform like that. If somebody even follows me, I don't have fear. You know, that's one thing about those uh, major marathons that just blows my mind every time is when you have those um, those lead groups. I mean, they're like, how, I don't know how they don't run into each other. Cause I mean, they're like, it looks like, maybe it's like a television camera angle thing, but it looks like that they're this close to each other, you know, drafting and stuff. I don't know how they don't trip each other up, but I mean, it's, that would, that would unnerve me <laughs> to have someone that close to me. Oh my goodness. Um, our training note from Coach Sean, it's common to be nervous leading into a race, wondering if you trained properly, if your race day nutrition plan will work, or if you're wearing the right shoes. Cast out those fears by reflecting back on all the hard workouts you completed to boost your confidence and focus on the race one mile at a time. That's my favorite. Just workouts, races, anything. Um, a lot of times I will just say, just run this this particular mile that you are currently in. Don't think about how much more you have to do, how much farther you have to go. Focus on this mile and then you complete that mile. All right, it's time to focus on this next mile. Um, but yeah, it, it's, you, you, you really know if you, that's why, okay. Training log, keeping a training log of some sort is really good, especially for, I think, for something like this. Um, Cause I can go back and look and see these workouts that I've done and I know that I did my best and that I'm trained for a particular race. So I think that's why keeping a journal or a log or Strava or anything like that, you can go, if you're starting to feel nervous, go back and look at what you did um, and how you completed those workouts um, and how they felt. I, I usually try to make a note of how that any particular workout felt, if it was good or bad or things I can change. Um, and it's always fun to go back and look at, look at that and know how far you've come. But, so that's the one for today, running toward the rock. Um, I hope everyone's doing good this Wednesday, middle of the week. Uh, so we're halfway there to the weekend. Um, yeah beautiful weather here. I hope you're having really good uh, spring weather wherever you are and I will see you tomorrow.